is absolutely miserable and grim out there, as indeed it was on Sunday, where we uh, both, although we didn't see each other, I think, no. I were at the anti-Semitism march yesterday. I was, uh, yeah, some way behind you uh, leading the way, but uh, it was very, very cold weather. And actually, I think that's just a testament to all those people that were prepared to march two miles, three miles through London. None of yeah. you but normal protesters, it, it should be said, not people who are out not on the usual suspects every week. I have to say, it's one of those things, isn't it, that, that actually there are people who kind of do marching. Um, and, and, you know, you know, they've got their flags, they've got their posters, and they just, that's what they do. They do a regular... What are we marching for or against this week? You've got reversible... I'm not really a marcher. Yeah, I, I think some of them have got these reversible Extinction Rebellion on one side, Palestinian flags on the other. <laughs> you know, ready... Probably. If we Socialist have, worker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bit of everything, bit yeah, of everything. It's the, the it Hate was, Your Country starter pack. It was a very... It was, <laughs> it was a very different crowd yesterday, wasn't it? And it comes that this march... It was a march you know, against anti-Semitism, a march of solidarity with the Jewish people of this country. Uh, lots of Jewish people on the march, obviously, but also lots of very prominent uh, figures in the Jewish community, uh, including my uh, good colleague uh, Vanessa Feltz, leading the way at the front. Um, but, but also many others of many different faiths, and like me, of none, who wanted to show solidarity. And actually, it turned out, given we've got a population of Jews in this country of around 250,000, more than 100,000 people turning out on the streets of London on a wet, miserable uh, November day, I, I thought was quite extraordinary. Um, no trouble whatsoever, apart from two arrests. One of those from someone shouting anti-Semitic stuff at the marches, uh, quite rightly arrested, although doesn't seem to be a problem if you're on a, a pro-Palestinian march. You seem to be able to do that with no problem at all. Um, you might get arrested later, maybe, but unlikely. Um, but uh, the other arrest was Tommy Robinson. Now, he, were, he informed the uh, organisers, the campaign against anti-Semitism, that he wanted to attend the march. They had told him they don't want him there. Um, the thing about Tommy Robinson, a.k.a. Stephen Yaxley Lennon, is whenever he appears, it's always about him. And what a surprise. I'm talking about it now. I, I'm angry at myself for doing it. But the, the reports yesterday about this wonderful march... Um, all had at least half of it about Tommy Robinson being arrested. Now, he was arrested simply for joining the march. He left a cafe we'd been having breakfast. He walked out into the street, and at that point, he was arrested. Uh, he was, like, pepper sprayed. Um, he was marched, you can see, if you're watching the footage on, our, on the TV screen, not just listening, he was a frog march by a huge number of police officers. I hold no candle for this man. This man, Tommy Robinson, is only about one thing, and that's Tommy Robinson. Um... His, his, his talk of defending Jewish people is actually a, an excuse to attack Muslim people in this country, in my view. Um, but should he have been arrested, given that there were people who are spouting horrific anti-Semitic comments on the streets at the, the pro-Palestinian marches every Saturday, who were not arrested, he hadn't broken any law that I'm aware of. No, and look, it, it's frustrating. I mean, Tommy Robinson is... I'm, I'm going to get off the fence here. He is a complete and utter nightmare. He's a disaster. He doesn't do the people he claims to represent any good. He doesn't do himself any good. Uh, if, it, if it was up to me, I'd tell him to go back to the mortgage fraud game because he was clearly better at that than he is at any, leading any sort of political He was convicted that. I think he, he's always denied... Uh, well, he was convicted, yeah, so yeah. there we are, yeah. and that's that. Now, um, what I would say is that I am uncomfortable, however, with the fact that his mere presence was considered sufficient by the police to amount to a public order offence. People would take... People would be... Uh, it would take offence. People would be, yeah, uh, uh, alarmed by him being there. But someone could say that about you or me. That isn't what the law should do. And the same laws that protect me and you protect dreadful people like Tommy Robinson. They protect dreadful people like Islamist uh, hate marchers that keep going on the streets. And I do think that the police have once again been found guilty yeah. of a double standard. Yeah. If you want to start arresting people willy-nilly for upsetting the Jewish community, potentially, or marchers, great. I, I've got about 100,000 people that were marching on Saturday whose names I'd love to provide you with, but you've got to do it fairly and even-handedly. And there will be many people that are waking up today, and this is what I think Tommy Robinson was no doubt trying to mm. prove, that's, that will say that was a political arrest. Yep, and, and, and it was. And this is the thing. Look, you know, think about Tommy Robinson, um, I think not his real name, is that... Like, like a lot of these people, there is quite a lot that he says that is actually true. And he says stuff that the mainstream politicians don't want to say about 
um, extremism on our streets and double standards and things like that. But then there's also the, you know, I'm sorry, blatantly outrageously racist stuff that he also uh, uh, says, which I've got no time for at all. Um, but when the police basically do exactly what he wanted, which was show their double standards, we had people from his book career Standing, doing, it was, to be, I'll make this very clear, it was a demonstration that was not organised, the people organising the pro-Palestinian uh, march on Saturday. It was a side demonstration. I'm going to make that absolutely, completely clear. But they were standing there in front of the police. Yes, some women were arrested, sort of, for, you know, do, oh, the glory to soldier of God's, soldiers of God or something uh, in, in, in Arabic. But they are spouting hate on the streets. They should be a prescribed terrorist organisation. They are virtually everywhere else, including in most of the Arab world, by the way. And, and, and then you arrest somebody who just leaves a cafe because some people organising a march aren't happy about it. I'm, you know, I'm very much, I mean, all credit to the campaign for anti-Semitism for organising that march. Really, really proud to have been invited on it. Um, but I don't think they should be able to say who gets to go on it. Yeah, and we saw it uh, a few weeks ago after the Suella Braverman comments when a far-right group were trying to get at the march. They were all, and I mean all, there were dozens and dozens, arrested in advance yeah. to prevent a breach of the peace. They were arrested en masse, whereas we see other cases where it is Islamist protesters, and I mean Islamists, people yeah. that believe that this country and other countries should be run by a political form of Islam, who are allowed to walk through shouting... To my mind, clearly, blatantly, blatantly yeah. anti-Semitic, pro-terroristic, yeah. in my view, statements. Got to have, got to have the same rules for everybody, haven't we? Nothing. But meanwhile, of course, we are we're also on the final day of the four-day truce between Israel and uh, Hamas. Uh, we see more um, uh, 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 hostages being released. We're going to be talking to the uncle of, of two teenagers who were released, who, who's, who I mean, just horrific, other family members killed. Um, just what these people have been through is extraordinary. But again, some of the, the discussion of this, this sort of, again, this moral equivalence that is given in the media, BBC and Sky are both just equally appalling for this, where they, they talk about this moral equivalence, like, oh, and, the, and these detainees being, women and children being detainees in Israel, being released from prison there, equal to, you know, four-year-olds being hostages whose parents have been murdered or are being released by Hamas, who've been held underground in tunnels for seven weeks and who and who've said, some of them, they, 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 the pretense that, you know, you weren't going to be released was kept up by their hostage takers until the last moment. They thought they were going to be executed and then until they found freedom. You know, when you're talking about women and children, we're talking about 17 and 18-year-old young men uh, you know, awaiting, awaiting trial. But we, we also imprison people awaiting trial. Women who have stabbed... And, and, you know, and set off bombs. These people are not equivalent to the innocent hostages taken. Yeah, yeah, whatever hosts on other breakfast morning television shows uh, mm. seek to say. But look, let's... Oh, sorry, let me know. If you mention Hamas hostages, I have to do this. <sighs> I think we all know who we're talking about there. Yeah, but let's be really clear. It's also really actually, quite frankly, racist, in my view, to say that, well, look, people in Gaza, they've endured a difficult time, by the way, so have Israeli civilians, so we can't really blame them for breaking into a country, mm. wielding Kalashnikovs, driving across, finding a peace concert, taking all of the women, the young girls, raping them, taking the babies, beheading them, burning them, taking as many women and children as you would like, hiding them in your terror tunnels, which, by the way, supposedly don't exist. Yeah. Uh, and, and we're meant to say that that is, oh, that's exactly equivalent to yeah. Israel pushing the, pushing the button on a well, hyper-targeted... Uh, we want to be even-handed. Being even-handed sometimes is actually giving sucker to the terrorists.